Hey folks, here we are still again. Uh, the lockdown continues in my neck of the woods, actually starting to get some some good news. We're seeing some early signs of progress. Uh, case numbers moving in the right direction. Hospitalizations are stubborn for now, but that's okay. Uh, we expected them to be. Hospitals are a lagging indicator. Maybe by the time we're speaking next week, things will be looking better. Situation very similar in Quebec as well. So the two provinces that have been struggling the most are genuinely starting to see some good news, and that's a really nice thing to see. Interesting news coming out of Europe, though. And no, it's not about the new variant or it's not about uh, any of that stuff. We're talking about vaccines again today, but we're talking about them from a different context. I don't want to talk about the, our, our own government. I don't want to talk about Trudeau or the provinces or blah, blah, blah. There was an interesting story coming out of uh, the European Union where European countries, including thus far Belgium and Germany, are starting to look at Pfizer and say, hey, are you sure you should be exporting all that stuff that you're making here in Europe? Or maybe should we should be using that for getting Europeans vaccinated? This is a really interesting story. You all remember at the start of the pandemic, uh, the outrage in Canada, but also the fear when PPE, personal protective equipment that we were counting on, was being held up at the border by the United States. Even your closest allies will screw you over when lives are at risk in their own countries. That's something we in Canada have, I think, forgotten and something we've been pretty harshly reminded of. There's going to be a debate at some point when this is all over about whether or not Canada should have a domestic capacity for making its own PPE. We're already working on that, whether or not we should have domestic capacity for our own vaccines, which is something right now we don't. And I bet you that will change in the next few years as well. When you look at this in the broader way, though, what we're going to have is a really difficult conversation. What should we actually preserve? And we'll probably need to spend taxpayer money to do this. Unique domestic capacity to manufacture, to build, to distribute, to have supply chains, whatever. The details will vary. There's going to be a lot of conversations about things that we were not able to do for ourselves, things that we were dependent on others to do for us. Normally, I'm a free trader. Normally, my view is that there should be no tariffs on anything and that we should have free, free trade with everyone. I believe in the ability of Canadians to compete, and I believe in the right of Canadians to buy the most affordable, best products that they wish to. I want the lowest possible trade barriers, but that's in general. The one exception I think we have always understood is that countries have security interests. We would have looked real cute if we bought all our bombs and torpedoes from Germany in 1939. Countries have long understood that you need to have the ability to do some stuff at home. If you're a big enough country, if you're a rich enough country, and Canada is rich and it is big, relatively lightly populated, but there's almost 40 million of us now. We're not as small as we used to be. We can do some of this stuff. The challenge of the post-pandemic era is going to be deciding which of these demands are genuinely in the interests of Canadian security, whether it's public health security or military security or economic security. And which of them, to be honest, are just good old fashioned protectionism, just people who are wanting the government to go out and make their competition go away for them, all in the name of security. I don't know how these issues are going to be settled. It's going to be complicated and difficult and controversial and contentious. But this is going to be the debate we have. What do we actually need going forward to be able to do for ourselves versus people saying, hey, government, please protect my business from me because I don't want to compete in that big, scary world out there.